scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. And then please, let's honor Dr. David Ogwele. Thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm here only but for a short time. And I pray that this moment will bless our hearts. Tonight is truly a moment of unusual encounters. Father, help us. We depend on you. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let your life of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us let the weight of your glory fall let the weight of your glory cover us let the life of your glory fall let the truth of your kingdom let it reign in us let the weight of your glory help us holy spirit open our eyes that we may see to see you high and lifted up you are shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. We'll see you high and lifted up. Shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power and love. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will speak so that our hearts will hear. Lift us to higher dimensions in the Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. I'll just give a charge and then we'll pray and I'll be back to my seat and we trust that the session we'll have with the man of God will be most inspiring. He's a veteran of the gospel. He truly understands the kingdom. And I pray that your heart will be open as we learn. But I just want to touch on just a little charge. The Bible says that the sons of Issachar there was a tribe of Issachar and the Bible says that these men had understanding of the times and that they knew what Israel ought to do. It's dangerous to not know what to do. There are three levels of the anointing that comes upon believers. The first level comes upon a believer according to scripture when 
you are grafted into Christ in the experience that we call the new birth. Are we together now? There is an unction that is upon a believer by reason of his being grafted into Christ. Number two, there is an anointing that comes upon a believer by reason of his office. Please listen very carefully. That when God calls a man, there is a backing. There are a number of things that follow the call of God upon a man. One of it is the empowerment that is sent to honor that office. Alongside that anointing, there are angelic cadres that signify the revelation given to that person. Revelation 1 verse 1 says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which he gave unto his servant John, he said, and he sent it and signified it by his angel. Are we together now? These angels excel in strength and they walk within the coordinates of that call. Number three, now listen carefully. The third level of the anointing comes upon a man by reason of going through the sacrifice of alignment to be part of God's program per season. That is not the anointing that comes upon you just because you are a believer. That is not the anointing that comes upon you just because of your office. That anointing comes as a testament, a product of diligence, the sacrifice of discerning like Habakkuk. He says, I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower that I will see what the Lord will say. So that you are able to discern what the Spirit of God is doing in a season. And when you pay the price to walk in peace with the Holy Spirit, there is a dimension of reward, is a grace that is upon you that makes you relevant as far as the program of God is concerned in that season. So it is possible to not be captured in the current dealings of God. This is not about backsliding. You can still be a believer. Your office can still be there. But as far as the current dealings of God is concerned, you did not pursue as proof of your interest. And he will honor your will by leaving you at that realm. Are we blessed? Yes. I say that because I presume that many of us here are born again. And there is a dimension of engracing that has come by reason of our being grafted into Christ. Then I presume that there are many ministers, servants of God, people who have answered the call, some who have been in the ministry for a while. Truly, there is a grace upon you by reason of your call. But there is what God is doing in this season. It says, Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. And when he was worshipped, they called him the God who was, who is, and who is to come. These are dimensions. Knowing the God who was is good, but is not enough. There is still the God who is. Are we together? There is this present truth, what God is doing within this season. And I believe that this conference seeks to bring us to not just receive miracles, signs, and wonders as important as that is, but to position us, to reveal to us by the Spirit, the current dealings of the Spirit across the nation, so that we can understand like the sons of Issachar and know how to align with what God is doing. Are we together? This is very important. I'm very passionate about knowing what God is doing because his grace doesn't just honor men. His grace honors his program. God's grace moves in the direction of his program. It looks like he's looking for men, but he's only looking for men who are following the program. The grace will not come to you just because you want it. It will come with respect to your diligent pursuit of God's program. When I sent thee, Lackest thou anything? Not when you went, when I sent thee. Are we blessed? 
The second thing that I want to touch very quickly is by the grace of God, I have been a student of revivals. I have been a student of the move of God. I have studied the move of God across the continents of the earth. I have had the privilege to meet a few people who were mightily used by God. Some in their lifetime still alive, some have gone to be with the Lord. And I have found out that revivals and the move of God for some reason does not seem to last long enough to deliver that which was intended. Are we together now? So here and there you have a sudden outpouring of the Spirit. The move of God across a territory. Mighty things are happening. Apostles and prophets rising. All kinds of things happening. And then because there is deficiency in accurate knowledge on how to capture and preserve revivals, the move of God becomes aborted through carelessness, insensitivity, and the humanity of men. So if you would give me 10 minutes, I want to just share something about preserving the move of God. It is not enough to pray for revivals. It is not enough to enjoy the presence of revivals. We must, we must understand the spiritual technology are located for preserving revivals. This is what will make a move of God transgenerational so that children will not say, parents, we once heard that there was a move of God here. Uh -uh. The nation of Israel, every time they encountered God, he would mandate that they captured his dealings and archive them through several formulas, either in scrolls or build a monument around that experience. He said, when your children ask you Tell them, this is what happened. If we do not know how to preserve revivals, there will be a generation that will arise that will not honor the God that we so lavishly pursue. Are we blessed? There are principles and patterns in the scripture that preserve revivals. This gospel we have received today have been preserved through the ages by a technology we must not lose. Respectfully speaking, this was the mistake of the Western nations. When God was moving through their parents and their grandparents, they were enjoying and pushing these revivals, but they did not create a system for continuity. So when Satan found out he could not do anything with all the evangelists, that these people were almost beyond backsliding. They had committed themselves and pledged their lives. He left them and came patiently to their children and grew with that generation. The generation he grew with are the captains of industry today. The generation he grew with Listen, let me tell you, if you are not part of the growth process of a man, don't expect to be featured when he gets to the palace. A generation will only be loyal to who was there when they were rising. Coming up arbitrarily with an information and an idea, an attempt and wanting a generation to give you attention when you were not there. So Satan knows this and he came and was patient for over three decades growing patiently with those we used to call children, growing patiently. And he, he brought them and showed them a route to success without God. And in the equation of their lives, they are yet to see the need for God. And if we are not careful, that same pattern will come to Africa where Satan will give up on the current move and say, I give up. You keep serving your God while I prepare for tomorrow. Preserving revivals. Alis Kali Baratia. And you pray in the spirit in one minute. Zikes Kali Barusha La Branda Zikatelia Hasabra Hushirana. Hallelujah. When Jesus rose again, the Bible says he was with the disciples for a period of 40 days according to Acts. 
that he was teaching them on the things or the matters of the kingdom. Are we together now? And then he told them, they asked him a question. They said, will you at this time restore the nation of Israel? And he said, it is not for you to know the times and the seasons that the father has put in his care. Verse 8 says, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. Now listen carefully. It says, when that activity happens to you, it will turn you to become witnesses. Not men of God. Not business people. No. The titles are simply the geography of the assignment. But our mandate corporately is to be witnesses. A witness is a validator of a claim. You do not need a witness until there is a contention. When you go to the court of law, are we together now? If you say this happened and someone is objecting, the judge will say introduce a witness. The assignment of a witness is to concretize conviction, to make sure that everybody, all and sundry, believe that that proposition was not a lie. So the Bible says your assignment is to be witnesses. And then he now told you that as witnesses, you are mandated to be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and then to the utmost part. And to do that, you shall receive The first thing that happens to you is that the Holy Spirit comes. Power is not the first thing that happens. The personality of the Holy Spirit is introduced to your life. There is something he does before power comes. You have to understand that scripture. Are we together? Yes. Jesus was speaking about the Holy Spirit. And he said, I have many things to tell you, but ye cannot bear them now. He says, how be it when he, the spirit of truth is come. He said, he will guide you. Even for truth, you must be guided because truth can still mislead. It's not a lie alone that deceives. The truth, when not guided, can lead you into error. So just because it is true does not mean it is profitable. You must be guided. Everything that destroys the body of Christ today came from truth, not a lie. Error is truth that is stretched within its beyond its boundary of relevance. So the Holy Spirit has an assignment to not just give you truth, but to guide you, to set the coordinates for their profitability in your life. That means there is something you should know before knowing about prosperity. If you don't know it and you just jump to it, the lack of that prior knowledge will make that truth to not profit you. This is not even where I'm going to. I have a few minutes. Listen carefully. That the Holy Spirit was sent to the church as the guarantee that revivals can be preserved. Not just introduced. We know the Holy Spirit as an introducer of the move of God, but very few people know him as the preserver. But generally speaking, there are principles I will just touch on one and then we'll pray. The first spiritual principle that preserves the move of God across a territory is the ministry of prayer. Prayer, the warfare and the intercessory dimension of prayer is one of the kingdom mysteries that can preserve the move of God transgenerationally. Prayer does not only bring the move of God. In the early church, they had prayer cells. They had prayer groups. They didn't just converge to break bread alone. They converge to pray. Did you know that the one thing Satan fought in Babylon was prayer. That a parliament came together to meet as though they were meeting about a state affair 
but it was really because the prayer of Daniel as a single individual was doing something to the spirits of the Medes and the Persians that ruled over the second heavens and a parliament under the influence of those spirits came together that for only the period of peace Hallelujah. When this system, this antichrist system that was encapsulated in a woman called Jezebel appeared to fight the purposes of God, then God now sent his prophetic system. I taught you yesterday, the spiritual system that restores the patterns of God. That system is called Elijah. Not just the man, Elijah. Elijah was an embodiment of that system. He used the weapon of prayer to preserve the purposes of God. It was at a time when the prophets of God were in hiding. Why? Because there was a system in a woman called Jezebel. I told you Jezebel is a system that only is activated when she sits with government. It's a system that fights influence. He who comes to God must know that he is and is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him.
the kingdom. This is how believers grew. And it's... And to align 
but you must trust God for grace to find your prayer altar once again for he spake a parable to the end that men ought always to pray and not to faint and you must trust God for the grace not to neglect the corporate gathering of the saints not for the purpose of a religious ritual for the purpose of enlightenment submitting yourself to the doctrine of the apostles to grow according to Colossians chapter 1 verse 9 to be filled with the knowledge of his will to be filled with all wisdom and with all spiritual understanding this is the purpose of that convergence and then number three to trust God not just to receive miracles but to become a conduit that you will be able to host superior dimensions of the presence and the power of God this and more remain the keys the irrefutable keys that will preserve God and his purposes in our life can I pray for you spare me five minutes pastor just to say a word of prayer Bring for me the lady that shouts under the anointing, loud to the hearing of everyone. The power of God is coming on a lady, very loud. Bring her. Father, I stretch my hands over your people. In the name of Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, I pray for you. I stretch my hands from the left to the right all across this auditorium. And in the name of Jesus, you are the people I prayed for yesterday. My dear, your wife, lift your hands. I know I prayed for you yesterday, but there is a prophetic dimension God is bringing you into. In the name of Jesus, I declare over you, take that fire now. You will never be the same. I release that grace upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you, the spirit of prophecy the bowels of the spirit that as many who are called into that dimension right now in the name of Jesus take that grace I shift you by the spirit step into those dimensions in the spirit in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I place grace upon your life the eyes that see and the ears that hear in the name of Jesus Christ and I declare the spirit of revelation accurate understanding of the mysteries of the kingdom in the name of Jesus may your eyes be open to see may your eyes be open to see may your eyes be open to see I declare anyone here under any yoke of darkness that is not of the Christ I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and in the name of Jesus the Christ of God every spirit that is foreign help that man I command that devil out of your life now out of your life now I speak to every closed door like your team says every door that has refused to open in the name of Jesus, I join my faith with the graces and the servants of God here. And we speak to those gates and doors. A fata be open. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm wrapping up. In Acts chapter 12, the Bible says, Peter was bound hand and feet. And prayer went on for his sake. The Bible says, that the angel of the Lord came and the chains fell and he passed through three gates the first gate out of the prison the second gate he says he got to a gate called the iron gate that opens to the city there are gates that control influence that when that gate is open the next thing you see is the city I declare over someone my Bible says he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in sunder. The gates that opens for your kingdom influence. I stand by the spirit of grace and I decree and declare let it be opened now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, I pray for you. That desire that you brought, we do not seek the Lord just because of things. However, in his presence there, there are tokens, consolations, proofs of his love, his power, and his majesty. I release my faith with you that everything that you came with as a request, let it be turned now into a testimony. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Now please listen. Please listen. As Dr. David Ogweli comes up, please I want you to sit down and learn the doctrine and the ways of the kingdom. Refuse to be distracted. Sit with all your heart. Pay attention and hear the counsel of God. The truths of the kingdom are the keys that release the power of God. Habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4. It says in that light that came out of his hands there was the hiding place of his power the power of God is found in his light are we together now so please all together thank you for all of this time but I want you to settle down and let us listen so that we are sound in doctrine we are built we are matured in the things of the spirit for this is why he gave the gifts that we are perfected we are thoroughly built that we are no more tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine and the slight of men. Are we together now? Pastor Jerry, thank you. And thank your lovely wife. I appreciate you. Thank you in the name of Jesus. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.